Hello, Internet. I'm not doing a master system challenge today. I am actually going to talk about a game that I completed just before Christmas. It's one that I have uh, had on my radar for like a long time, but never got around to playing. And I thought, well, I should change that. And that is the story of Thor, also known as Beyond Oasis. I actually, I don't own it properly for the Mega Drive, but I've owned it on Steam as part of the Mega Drive collection for a very long time. So, but I wanted to play it on the Mega Drive, so I'm doing it through my other drive. And I've already completed it, but I thought rather than just talk about my experiences, I would play for a little bit and then talk about it so you can actually see the gameplay. A uh, YouTuber with far better skills than I would record and capture the footage and then edit it and put it on, but that's not what we do here. So, let's begin. The first thing that struck me about playing the game was the graphics. I won't do all of that, but... And, oh yeah, before I forget, the music was created by Yu uh, Yuzo Koshiro, who you may know as the chap who did the music for the Streets of Rage series. So, uh, that's my complete save file, so... Uh, just under five hours, but not actual five hours of gameplay time because I died a few times. So we will uh, begin a new one. And I apparently I didn't press the right button. There we go. Uh, null. Huh, you can just do null. Didn't know that. So. The story is, is that you're Prince Ali and that you've found a golden armlet on this island and as soon as you've taken it, the island sinks. But it turns out that there is a silver amulet as well, which has been discovered, uh, but it's being employed for less than peaceful purposes. Peaceful purposes, that doesn't work. For bad things, so using it for bad things. Anyway, but like I say, one of the first things that struck me was just the graphics, like the colours. To me, I think this is actually gorgeous, at least for the time that the game was created. Um, I've already mentioned about who... that. Um, about the music being made by Yuzo Kishiro. Um I find it serviceable. There's nothing that sticks out. Like, I mean, even now, I'll go still, like, put on the Streets of Rage 1 and 2 soundtracks. And I and just listen through them. But the music from this game, not, not it really stuck with me. Sadly, but I wonder if that's just because of the genre. Like, maybe Yuzo is just more at home with like modern dance and techno than kind of like fantasy games. But I mean, it's all relative, though, isn't it? So other people may love this the music from this game. Anyway, so uh, gameplay-wise, it's um, well. As you can see, I have a dagger, and I am just stabbing this guy. The... The 
because uh, the way you kind of level up in this game is that some enemies will drop heart containers, which will increase your health. And then as you go through the game, your magic meter will uh, increase as well. Because uh, as you progress through the game, there are four spell, uh, four um, summons you pick up, which give you different abilities. Uh, so you have uh, water, fire, shadow, and um, is earth right? Uh, it's like a a snake, a grass snake, but a, a plant snake, but. And they could do anything from heal you to um, making duplicates of you or just doing big fireballs. The game uses the save system as you probably saw from the intro screen, but and it's actually very fair. Um, you can save pretty much anywhere, which is quite nice. It's not like, um, say, Final Fantasy, where you have to go save um, on the world map. This actually lets you save in like dungeons and things, so. The combat does get repetitive though, so unless if you mix it up with like different weapons or actually really you go to town with the summons, then it's pretty much just what you're seeing over and over. Because I'm a bit of a hoarder, so if I got nice weapons, then I would save them for boss battles. Because uh, the dagger is the only thing that actually is unlimited, whereas everything else will have a certain amount of uses. Again, just uh, looking at the uh, like the water. I think I did a great job with this, and I can't believe, again, how long it took me to finally play this game. I mean, this is, for me, kind of similar to A Link to the Past. A Link to the Past is, is definitely the better game. I'm not going to even try and argue that. But I still think this is definitely worth playing. And there's also a sequel that was made for, sorry, a prequel that was made for the Sega Saturn called, um, I think, The Legend of Thor. And um, Legend of Oasis, something like that. I still need to play that. But uh, sadly, that hasn't been re-released on one platforms like this one has. So, I also find that the dungeons in this game actually don't go on for too long, which is quite nice. So, if you just have a bit of time just to try and pl um, play through a bit more of the game, you can do that. You have to feel like you're slugging through a dungeon for um, an hour. And if you take a look, the game has a handy map system. So this is the island that we will explore. And so on the left, you can see like the flashing red icon, which is you, and you can see the flag showing which direction you need to go in. So the game is very good at telegraphing where you need to go. Again, I just, I love the graphics of it. Uh, but yeah, you can see the status. So I'm rank one, of course. Got 13 kills. Uh, currently my HP is at 200. But, uh, because enemies respawn, if you move off of the screen, then you, if you wanted to, you could just spend a lot of time just leveling up your health if you find that you're struggling. But, I mean, it's not a difficult game. Like I said, I did die at times, but at no point was I, like, throwing my control against the wall because the boss was too hard. There are certain puzzles that I had to spend some time thinking about but like um 
say there are four levers that need to be um they either are pushed to the left or the right and try to figure out which should face which direction that kind of thing but uh, you can run and I have to say, that scream that they make there, that... I always think of Streets of Rage when I hear that. <laughs> I wonder if that's uh, Yuzo's influence. Anyway. I think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to say. Um, yeah, so if you haven't played this and you're looking for an action-adventure game, um, I don't know how much this goes for if you're looking for the cart itself. Um, I'm hoping it's not too expensive. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, I, I think it's a great game. Definitely worth your time. And as you saw, my play time was... or well, completion time was under five hours, not including deaths. So it's not like it's going to take you months to get through. Um, I really, really will need to take a look at, um, how do I pronounce it? Soleli? Soleli? Uh, like, another similar style game that was also for the Mega Drive, but I know that if you want to pick up the cart for that, then that, that is definitely an expensive game. So, yeah, well, I hope you have found this enjoyable, and if you've never heard this game, or if, like me, you've seen it on the various 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 Mega Drive collections they've done why wouldn't they do a Master System collection or you know a Game Gear collection or a Sega Sound collection but I get with ISOs that will probably be a lot bigger of package to sort out but anyway yeah give it a try cool thanks for watching